Cartoonist Guy Gilchrist has worked on many of America's favorite shows, like The Muppets, Looney Tunes, The Pink Panther, and The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. As a child, Guy loved cartoons, but he was abused, and these TV shows became a means of escape. Today, he's the cartoonist of the long-running comic strip Nancy and Sluggo. Guy hopes to inspire kids to find their faith through drawing. You had a bit of a rough childhood, but somehow in the midst of the things that you went through, mm -hmm. you were able to discover this amazing gift that you had. How did you start drawing? Yeah, I was a poor kid. We didn't know we were poor. We had nothing, but nobody else had anything. And my mom was a single mom uh, when, when I was young, and she worked at uh, diners and hotels, and, and she would bring me with her. And whatever she happened to have, whether it was pages out of the guest book for people to sign in or a placemat or whatever, there was always a free newspaper, too. She'd open up to the comic section, and she'd give me a pencil and say, here, draw this meaning everything in the, wow. and that was my childcare, that was my babysitter, were the free funnies that we had, you know, in the diner. You had some ups and downs. And oh, gosh, yes. You know, my mom did uh, remarry, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a happy home. Uh, there were a lot of problems with my, with my stepfather, and I used to go out into the woods, and that was kind of where I met God. I'd be out in the woods and I'd be crying. I'd be wondering why these things were happening to me. And I would talk to the man in the sky. One thing I read was when you were a teenager, you got a letter, a rejection letter from a magazine. You really did check up on me, <laughs> didn't you? I tried to. <laughs> but the thing was, you know, I think you, you knew you were gifted. You knew you were talented. But here you have someone telling you what you're doing is not good enough. Oh, but... And it was Mad Magazine. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, they were like, Mad Magazine. I rode off to Mad, sent them about 50 pounds of my stuff. And, of course, I was copying their great artists. I thought I was pretty good. I got this letter telling me that I stunk. What an incredible blessing. Do you know, Holly, years and years later, I met the man that wrote me that letter. Wow. He basically, what he, he said was that he said, I stunk, the, the copies stunk. But then he said, the life drawings you do have great promise. Draw like yourself, be yourself. I met that man after many years. I was in the National Cartoonist Society at an awards dinner, and I thanked him for the greatest letter I ever received. And you call it the greatest letter you ever received. Uh, truly. Did it inspire you or encourage you to keep going or what? what oh, yeah. Well, after the three or four weeks of crying, you know, it was <laughs> over. Yeah, absolutely. It made me realize that I had to be good. You know, I couldn't just think I was, I had to try. And, you know, I've, that's been my entire life has been trying. I don't think I have any, had any of the jobs, any of these incredible gifts that I have because I'm the best artist or the best writer that tried out for the job. I think I'm probably the guy that tried the hardest. At one point you went through a very difficult divorce yes. and that was when you had a turning point and you really came to know him for yourself. What happened? I had lost everything. I didn't care about losing everything because I had come from nothing. You know, the things of this world weren't that meaningful to me. But my children, I got down on my hands and knees and I raised my hands toward the sky and I said, God, just tell me what to do. Just tell me what to do. And I began reading scriptures and understanding. And if I didn't understand, I'd read it three times. God's love began to come in to me, and I realized that all of these blessings, drawing the Muppets, doing Nancy, all these things, why they were given to me, I just try and try and try to fulfill and somehow or other to try to shine back that love that is so endless and so amazing and just fills me with such gratitude. 
You know, that's one thing I find very interesting because in some way you've been able to infuse all of these things we've talked about, the good and the bad, into mm -hmm. Nancy. I think that's the reason I'm doing the Nancy yeah. strip. You know, when I took over the strip, of course, I didn't create the strip. You know, the strip's been around for 81 years now. Yeah. What I saw was a little orphan whose life was changed by an aunt who had been a flapper, you know, in the 1920s and stuff, a single girl in New York City. And her life was changed too. Love and second chances, that's the heart of the strip, it's the heart of my life. Maybe that's why folks can identify with it. I know that's why I can write it. It's probably some young man or young boy, young girl who's watching today who has some of the same experiences. Yeah. They're in poverty, maybe they've been abused. They, yeah. Someone maybe told them what they do is not good enough. I know you have a heart for, for young people. How would you encourage them to keep at it and keep doing that thing that God has given them? Other people may not see your gift. Mm -hmm. Other people may not see how strong and how beautiful you are. That's okay. God does. God gave you the gift of today. He gave you the gift of desire in your heart. He gave you grace for love forever. You don't need to worry that you're not strong enough. You are strong enough. You don't need to worry that your past somehow defines you. It doesn't. Your gift, God's love, your desire to want to reflect God's love in your life, that's what's going to bring you forward. That's going to be your path. That's going to be your success. That's what's going to define you. Is That's your future.